Hello and welcome to the 18th part of my LEGO Scratch tutorial series for the LEGO Mindstorms EV3, for the LEGO Mindstorms Road Inventor and for LEGO Spike Prime. There hasn't been any uploads in the past weeks and I'm sorry for that, but now there's a new video. So let's get started. And in this video we will try to use lists. And we've got an example. I've got a normal hub with a color sensor and some colors. And now you might ask yourself, what can you do with this? And there's actually quite a bit that we can do with this. And uh, But first, let's get to the functionality of lists. Lists basically are lists of variables. But what are variables? If you remember the last parts, in variables you can store something. You can store a value in a variable and then you can remember it. For example, you can count how often you did something, how often something happened, and stuff like that. That's what we can use variables for. And with lists, you can basically store more than one variable, so you can store more than one value. I think that that makes sense, but you might not know how to use them yet. In the software, we've got variables. I've already clicked on variables. And here we can make a new variable or also a new list. I already made one that we will take a look soon. But uh, this is where you can make a new list. Then you have to enter a name and then you get a few new blocks. And lists have a few operations that you can do. They are basically a row of variables and you can add something to this row, a new value. You can delete a value of that row, you can delete all of the values in that row, you can insert something to a certain position, you can replace something, you can get the value of an item at a number. This is a really interesting block that we will take a look at today. And this is not the only part about lists, we will cover them in the future parts as well, but uh, today we will make a simple example. We've also got a, a block to check if a thing is in the list and then at the number or the position of the thing in the list. We can also get the length of the list and check if something is in the list. So these are pretty similar, these blocks. What do we want to do? I've got a color sensor and these blocks. And now my idea is that we can basically put a color in front of the sensor and then display on the screen which color it is. But with the blocks for the sensor, we will only get numerical values, so we can only get a color code. And basically, minus one is uh, no color detected or wrong reading, zero is black, one is pink, the next value is nothing defined, then the next value is blue, light blue, green, nothing yellow, nothing, nothing, red and white. That are the colors that we can detect with the sensor, but it will only detect the number, so it will only return one if it sees ping. But we have to translate the number into a color or into something that we can write to the screen. And I already pre prepared something, a list of all the colors. Zero or black is missing here, I will explain that soon. But first we will delete everything in that list because otherwise the content of the list stays as long as the hub is turned on. So if I add something each start of the program, then the list would get longer and longer. And that's the reason why I delete everything at the start. And then we basically add the text values, the strings, the text, in the right order to this list. For colors that we can't read, there's a minus, and we add them to this colors list. So now we've got a list with the names of the colors in the order of the colors. How can we access them? We've got this item one of colors, and with this block, we can basically get the value that's inside of this depending on the number, so on the place in the list. The first place, the second place, and so on. 
so what we, what do we want to do? We want to write something to the screen and we want to read the text from this list and we find that value by the color. So this I can already make my program. This will write the text or the name of the color or of the item in the list at the position of the color that we read to the text or to the screen to the dot matrix. And that's basically how we write this text to the screen. There's still a few things that we will have to add. First of all, I want to do that in loop. So we can always see the current state of the list or that we can all so that it always shows the current color in front of the sensor. And there's still another case and that's no color. Basically, this program won't work properly if it doesn't detect a color. So we have to catch that and we can check if there's no color on the sensor. We can check if the color in front of the sensor is no color or not a good reading. But we don't want to check if the color can't be read. We actually want to check the, the opposite, if a color can be read. And this will get a bit complicated when, it's come, when it comes to the logic, because we can check if we can not can't read a color. So if the color can't be read and that's not the case, then we can write this thing to the screen. Sounds a bit complicated. Maybe it's a bit complicated to understand, but it actually works. And now let's try it out. I think that red sometimes makes problems, so let me take green. Green works just fine. We can also use blue, or in this case it detects light blue, but it also detects blue, and yellow works as well. Red is a bit problematic from time to time, but you can see that in general this program works. And we can also check the content of the list because here at the monitor, this is basically a list of what the list contains. So it's everything one after another, pink, nothing, blue, light blue, and so on. And now to the question why black doesn't work. This block, let's say that this block sees pink, which is the first element in the list. Then this returns one and we check the first item in the list of colors and that's pink. So basically we can't read the zeroth color in this list. We could add black at the start but then we would have to add one to this color reading. So this is the program, it worked and now I've got an idea that you can try to do on your own. I will show you how to do that in a future video. I'm not sure when it will come out, but I will show that at one point. And the idea is that you can use this color block to program a vehicle. You can have these colors and maybe you can use red to drive forwards, green to drive backwards, right to turn, uh, blue to turn right and yellow to turn left. And then you can basically show to the sensor which color you want to draw, do or what you want to do and the color for that. Then you can confirm with the button and then you can make a list of commands that the robot can do. That's an idea what you can do in the future or what you can try on your own. I will show that in the future, future but that was it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please tell me if you didn't understand something in the comments and I will try to explain that or maybe I will 
explain that in the future. Or maybe if you've got a problem that you can't solve, you can also ask that in the question in the comments, and I might answer that in the future as well. But anyways, thanks for watching. See you in the next video and bye.